Hello everyone, welcome back to the Green and Mullen Show here on Newcastle Fans TV. Today we are joined by one of the most up-and-coming boxers in the North East. She is 4-0 and Ooh. she's a massive Newcastle United fan as well, so we had to get April Hunter on. Massive. So April, massive, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show, April, how are you? I'm good, mate. How are you doing? He's good. I'm very good, very, very good. We were just talking off, uh, off camera there. Obviously you've been suffering quite badly with COVID and hopefully you're on the men now where you're kind of just towards the end of it now want to try and get back in the gym and back training and get that well, next fight sorted yeah well i'm out of isolation tomorrow um and I, like the first four days or just five days i couldn't get my head off the pillow but uh i am feeling better now like a lot better than i was so just see just see how i get on tomorrow in the gym which is not pushing too soon too fast <laughs> Were you in camp, or did have you got? A, did you have a date for your yeah, next fight yet, yeah. or was it just ticking over? No, we got told after. So at the Newcastle show, um, my coach pulled Eddie and said, "Listen, Eddie, when's your next out?" And he just said, "The end of August, the start of September." Um, but then um, Tony's got COVID as well. So but just before I, which just before I tested positive for it, I messaged him saying, "Oh, I've seen that um, the Josh Warrington bill's just been announced. Like, what, what's happening? That's the start of September." Could I be on that? Um, and he just said, hey, well, I'm, I'm, I'm bad. Like, obviously, I'll ban the next 10 days. He said, as soon as I've spoken to them, I'll ring you. So, like, I got told that. So let's just, let's hope he sticks to his word in, in September. But I'm going to have to see how I get on, you know what I mean? Like, some people's road back to fitness is, is long after this because it affects your lungs and stuff. But, like, I was telling these off camera, my breathing I, I wasn't really a difficulty. It was more just a bit of a cough and, like, flu, flu-like symptoms. So, fingers crossed. It's it's making sure that you don't rush back because it's just like anything like you see footballers that have had it and like obviously with the Olympics as well. It's making sure that you're in peak physical condition for like boxing's probably oh, the most yeah. one of the most toughest sports going, isn't it? Oh, I've got a I've got a great coach and if I if I'm not fit I'm not I'm not fit. He's not walking to me with a ring and so <laughs> uh, uh, like that's just that's his motto. If I'm not fit, I'm not performing in sport and the fight's not going ahead. So. Uh, I wouldn't get put it even if just say September come and I wasn't ready. He would he would pull us. So I'm lucky in that sense he protect us because you you need that sometimes as a fighter because you would just go through with it yourself. Yeah, I, I bet. Um, before we kick into the to the to the boxing side of things, um, during your last fight, I heard in the commentary they were saying that boxing was a kind of like you fell into it because you could have been a footballer. Is that right? Yeah, well, when I, I start, so this is this is the story. I might as well start the start. <laughs> when I was nine years old, right, I was playing a football tournament, and John Spence, you know the, you'll be familiar with it. Oh, uh, I know. I was just about to mention the, that. The Astro <laughs> turf outside, where everyone used to run to, and there was a fight. Well, I was playing on there, and um, and uh, Jeff Hurst was there for some reason as like a guest thing, and uh, he pulled pulled me because I was in primary school at this point, and he pulled me, um, my school teacher, Mr. Stevenson, and just said like. You need to get her to sign up for a football team, like she's really special. So he pulled me mom and then I joined North Shields and then within like four months I was I, I had trials for Newcastle Academy. Then I went to my trials, I got picked for Newcastle Academy. I had like little potential England things going on and it was just like it was all going good and then I was uh I was uh <laughs> end up going to Monk Seaton after John Spence, long story. But anyway, <laughs> they've got a um they've got a They've got a. They had a men's like academy team, and I used to like train and stuff, and do play football with the lads. And um, there was an American head teacher. Called, uh, I kind of forgot his name, but anyways, he was all sorting out scholarships and stuff, and all that was in talk. So a scholarship to play college football, and I ended up doing my ACL. But I, so I paid from being nine till I was sixteen for for Newcastle, like or like Newcastle Academy. I was to sign, had to sign a contract. Everything it was legit. It was legit. But um, I done my ACL and. I haven't played football since, mate. Miss it's, it? I, I, do well, know what it is. I remember it being unreal. Like, I, like <laughs> I was talking about the Gary Seven course. I don't know if you can even remember that. Yeah, yeah. Back the in Gary the day. Seven, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that yeah, was the first to, time. I used to, to like run rings around the boys. <laughs> you did. You did. I was just about to say that, but like I remember. It, it, obviously, I think you must have been one of the only few girls that used to do this, Abel. And yeah. I was telling Sam, obviously, a few times that. I think it was yourself, Paul, and I think it was another. I don't know if it was. I don't know if you were. It was a Charlie little lad. Yeah, there was there was um, me and Wilson, Will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we used to all go there, play football in the summer holidays. <laughs> Mad that. 
blast um, all past that, mate. I'd forgot about that. See, see yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, it kind of makes sense now how you fell into boxing because I mean, if you had to play football with Johnny, that would make me <laughs> want to coach too. So it kind of makes sense. Hey, I scored two against Sunderland. I'm, that's that's my claim to fame. Man. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh... I used, to, I used to always get sent off against something. <laughs> <laughs> I but if I, if, I asked you, if I asked you back then, April, if you would rather, if you want to be a professional footballer playing for Newcastle or a professional boxer winning, you know, world titles hopefully in the future, what do you think you'd say now? I, I think if you said that back then, I think like being a world champion is like, I probably would have... I, I don't know. It's a funny one. I probably would have. I probably would have picked that because it's just. I wouldn't even have been thinking about it. But I'd be like, I bet you that's mint. But the football. I love the football. I really did. That was like, uh, my heart was. My heart was set on that. But it just kind of didn't. Kind of didn't happen. But I'm. I'm grateful for it. Do you know what I mean? Like I, the love I have for boxing is like more than I have for football. I like, am mildly obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everything's meant to be. How did you fall into boxing from rupturing your ACL and knocking football on the head to, to kind of finding your way into boxing? It was, quite a, it was quite a long path, really. It was like, done me ACL, you find alcohol as a kid and you, you're going out with your friends, you're drinking, you're hitting with your beer, you're eating takeaways, putting loads of weight on. And, and it was, I, I went to the gym to lose weight, mate. I think I was, I got like, I'd always been fit, like from nine year old, you know what I mean? Training every day. Well, it was just like two. You'd go up to the centre of excellence twice a week, then you play a game on the Saturday all over the country, and then you have to do your own little thing. So I was always like really fit as a kid, and I think my body was used to like a certain level of exercise. And I used to be able to eat what I want and stay small. And then when I when I done my knee, I was just, just binge eating and that, and just, just piled the weight on. I was like, how did this happen? <laughs> it just comes on, doesn't it? But uh, that's it, really, mate. I just went to went to lose weight. I went to Howden. Boxing Academy, Unique Fitness, and uh, the coach there, Lee Graham. The first session I went in, I don't know if you're familiar with Anne Thornsby, he's a pro. He was there on one of the first sessions I'd done. And um, I was in the ring spawn with the lads, doing like King of the Ring, one in, one out. Like, oh. And then I just fell in love. I, just gonna, I, lo I love how Whitley Bay Knights out of turned it going into boxing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Banner in deep, and now you've <laughs> been <laughs> champion of the world, hopefully. But, um, purple jug stories there. <laughs> oh, just a bit, just a bit. <laughs> we'll save that one for another day, I think. Um, no, but in all, but in all seriousness, um, you see, you hear a lot of boxers, especially when they first start April. It's like a release for them. They feel like they need something to focus on, especially. Uh, start up a little bit there. Um, normally, it's, uh, normally it's uh, my wife by the. I'm delighted that it's Johnny's for a change. That's what yeah. happens when you stay around in North Shields, the Is internet connection. Me and you are good. Terrible. Jesus Christ. I'm basically living in the Bronx and Liverpool and mine is good. <laughs> well, why is it that you had to move to Liverpool? Because obviously you had your homecoming show in, in the North East a while ago and now, but you're based in Liverpool. Is that down to Tony Bellew who, who's, who's managing you or? No, Liverpool have come before Tony Bellew, to be honest. Um, yeah. What happened was I was training with obviously Joe Laws, Tommy Hodgson, all together. It's just me and you now. We'll have to, yeah. we'll have to run the show. Uh, so It's better this way, I think. <laughs> you can see more of my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was, I was training in Wall's End there and the, the coach at Wall's End um, he's got two kids and a, and he, he's not a like a full time coach. He's a part time coach. He works as well, and uh, I just we, we kind of both agreed that if I'm going to get the where I need to be, I need a full time coach. I need someone to train us on the morning. I need someone with us on the night time while I'm doing my runs. Like it's not just oh you do your boxing on the morning, then go and do your own runs, and you know what I mean. Like it needs to be structured everything. So while I was at Wall's End, that that was it. You train on the morning, and then you do your own cardio stuff where oh mate down yeah it's a whole new ball game i've got a running program i've got a i've got a, a nutritionist on board he's taking us to see someone at the university you go on the body scanner see what what weight i should be making every single every single part of it is just like nothing's left to chance you know what i mean like if i do a if i do a even a green state steady run he's there like it's, it, do you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't, he couldn't cut any corners. He's on you. 
And I believe if you're going to be a professional, you've obviously got to want to do it yourself. And you've got to, you know, people will say, oh, well, you want to be a boxer. Oh, God, it's just Netflix kicking in there by itself. Um, <laughs> if you want to be a boxer, you should be doing your sprints and your runs by yourself. But I get that. But when your coach is there, you always push yourself that little bit more. And I think, like, it's all the little 1% that, that you need. And I've, um, I come down, what, what happened is, so that happened, then we went to Lanzarote, me and Joe, Joe Laws. Yeah. She was over there for three weeks. And to be honest, I just wasn't feeling it. Like so, when I come back from Lanzarote, he stayed there for the for the Ryan and Charlton fight, and um, I come back and I, I invited him. He could he could have come to Liverpool for for a trial as well. Obviously, it wasn't just come to Liverpool get in. Obviously, I'm training in the Rotunda. There's loads of great people who's like you get a week trial. You got to prove yourself whether you like you whether they like you or not. And I gelled with my coach. It was all and it all went good, mate. And and look, are oh, you back? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's oh. happened there, so I'm really apologise for that. <laughs> no shit, that's um, Wi-Fi. I'm got... <laughs> just giving them a little rundown on how I how I ended up in Liverpool. So from land, we done. I done a bit, bit time in Lanzarote, and I just, I just, well, that wasn't for me. And um, and then I come down here, and I was just like, wow. Now the <laughs> welcome to pro boxing. I think I was getting, I was getting ill every six weeks because like. I wasn't like up at home. I wasn't eating the right food for the. So when I come down here, yeah, I was training that hard. So you train like four hours on the morning. Sometimes I go in the gym at ten o'clock. Sometimes I don't get out at half two, swear down. And then I'm back at S and C, or I've got running or sprints or um, whatever he's got us doing on the night at like six o'clock. So all that changes. So I'm training like to do double session four four times a week, a recovery session on a like a recovery day on a Friday where it's just one, and then one one on the Saturday, and it's just. It's next level. It's 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 hard. It's good, but that's what I, I think. That's what you need. So my past two fights I've had since I've been in Liverpool, I've never felt felt as fit. Like I remember my first two pro fights and coming back after the first round and being like, <laughs> "Man, I didn't have that. Not even after the fourth. <laughs> so it's me. I was just going to say, how much training goes into a, a fight camp? I say people that don't that don't don't know what. Um, <laughs> I've never seen a boxing like pre match routine. Do they? Is it still like your 12 weeks? Is it? I think people still associate like Rocky films and like running upstairs and running up hills and all that. Is it? Is it? Is there much change yeah. from that? It's like, it's it's very similar. It's very similar to that. Like, um, the way my, my coach works, works it, he does it all off a plan. So there's different, different parts of the, the camp will be for different things. So, like, just say at the start of it, for the first two weeks, you're on graft. So it's like, in the morning, you come in and you're like, you're on the bags grafting, and every minute he's shouting out something different and screaming at you, and it's just literally flat out graft. And I think that's to build the, build the foundation of the of the engine, and then it goes into other stuff. And but basically, like box Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then on a Tuesday, Thursday, there you like you sprints, runs, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, S and C. So it's like it's it, it's packed, and then a Saturday you do you do a long steady state run. It's a lot of training, and then on top of that, you've got three days sparring. So you see the spar. I've been going up to, um, Peter Fury's gym with Savannah. So with um, my coach is actually like like that's what he wants for me. So for, I'm only in Liverpool three days a week now, and I'm up there for two days. So I'm like, I've got Peter Fury, and I've got down there. I've got the best of both worlds. That's not a bad little mm. uh, little setup to have, really. Is it? I mean, we've had Savannah on the show before. Um, yeah. Um, got the t-shirt on, haven't you, Sam? I have got. Do you know what I have got the t-shirt on? Yeah. <laughs> Mate, yeah. honestly, one of the best human beings I'll ever meet. Honest to God, not even just not even just about boxing, just outside of boxing, just a genuinely really really lovely person. And uh, how, so that's how, when I go up there, I see she she puts us up. So she puts us up for the night. I get fed. I've got a little single bed in the room. She was on about moving. I was like saying, send us a picture in my room. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's all good and sharing the ring with her, mate. Like you kinda get better. You genuinely can it. Can it get better? Yeah. Well that, that's the thing. Um she, I think she's at the moment, I think she is the best female fighter around. I know people mention okay. Katie Taylor and whatnot, but watching Thank Savannah, you. it's like poetry in motion sometimes. People can't get near her. Right. You've what, obviously what, shared a ring with her. Have you managed? you managed to clip her? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've clipped that. I, I land on her sometimes, not often, but when it does, it's good. It's good. It's good. I, I enjoy it because it doesn't happen often. But uh, 
no, it's it, it's honestly it is it's it's good 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 sparring. It's um obviously I'll be learning more more than she will, but it's it's good sparring for her as well. Like she she's just she's said like she when I go up to Peter Fury, she doesn't have to to spar me. She could bring other people in and and they choose to to keep me a part of her camp as well. So that's good. When you got that first fight, and you know that it's coming, and it's your first professional fight because I'm I'm looking at like I did a little bit of research here, and you literally haven't had a lot of amateur experience at all. Like considering you see other fighters, did you feel like you were ready at the time to kind of make that huge step, or did you think you needed a couple more fights? Honest mate, it was mad how it happened. I wasn't even thinking about turning pro yet. My goal was right win a national title, turn over. So, um, the way I done me amateur, it was all sped thing. Like I I could have entered the the um the 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 under tens to. To, but and I went into the to the elites and once you go up you kind of drop back down so like I got the semi-finals of the elites I lost on a 3-2 split I think with Laura Stevens which was and, and it was on BBC and it was, it was a close fight and she was the number one seed so after 15 fights we get to the finals of the ABS it's not too bad you know what I mean um, so I'd have been like ranked number three in the country technically when I turned over um, but that wasn't the plan what happened was Steve Rafe um, approached us about this ITV documentary on Northeast Boxing and it was meant to be going ahead so they give us an iPad and stuff and, and I took it with us on like me, me last time and then it ended up falling through the show didn't end up happening but mm. because that was put in my head I was like they, they were going to pay for me medicals and everything and I went to um, Richardson and Robbie Davies press conference and I just said Eddie put us on the show I'll do 400 tickets he was like will you will you I was like I'll, I'll put us on the show I'll do and 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 that's what happened, and I done them. I could have done more. I done more. I think could have done. Could have done so many for that. For that. For that bill. The bad blood. It was a good yeah. call. That one. It. Yeah. <laughs> call that. Um, so, and that's just how it happened. Has Has Lewis Ritson been an influence on you? But because obviously he's he's kind of brought the big shows back to the to the northeast. Um, I think every northeast boxer has to thank Lewis Ritson for for the experiences and the nights I've had. Like myself, Joe Lord and stuff like we've we've like he's been on Sky Sports a few times. I've been on Sky Sports. I, that's all down to Lewis. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've got so much respect for Lewis. And uh, as we were speaking about Paul earlier, so Paul's um Paul's group of friends are all in the same year as Lewis. So I've known I, I was going to watch Lewis um when he was boxing at the Rating Meadows himself. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So uh, I've uh, uh, I have a lot of time for Lewis. I think the dream, uh, we've, we've never had the chance to speak to Lewis, but I'm sure the dream would be to have a show at St. James's Park. I think, could you oh, imagine? Yeah. You could, we could sell out, no problem. Oh. We? Well, look at this. We've got the McCormick brothers as well. After the Olympics, if you say Pat, or, well, I, I, hopefully Luke does well, but I think Pat is like most likely to get the gold. And if they they turn over after that, after a gold medal, and there's, uh, I think that's St. James's Park. Pretty much done between them, Lewis, Savannah, me and little Joe, but it's all good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, oh, that that would be one hell of a night of boxing. If Lewis can bounce back and, and work his way into a world title fight, Savannah's got Clarissa Shields. That has to happen yeah, someday. That has to happen. I genuinely think Clarissa Shields doesn't want to know, honestly. Like, I agree. That, that's, Savannah is die. Honestly, Hannah York, I'm not bullshitting for She is dying for that fight. She would sign a contract tomorrow on the basis of that fight, but it's just getting it over the line. It seems really difficult for her. But, um, I hope that Clarissa just doesn't disappear in MMA. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a golden ticket, that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a great fight for Savannah. Great fight for Savannah. Life changing. It is. I mean, Clarissa can only run for so long. But then, obviously, you get yourself on that bill as well. I mean, your last few fights have only been three <laughs> rounds, but. From watching your fights, it seems like you're you're only just getting going. By the time I was meant that that, this, that last fight was meant to be a six rounder. It was six rounds on Facebook Live or four rounds on Sky. Take your pick. So uh, I think I think uh, the Sky Sky slot out there. Uh, I honestly genuinely thought I was doing a six rounder. The morning of the fight, I woke up and I was like, "This is on box track for four rounds." I was like, "What's going on, Darren Matchroom?" I was like, what? What's going on here? <laughs> Message Tony, it's all right, you're getting paid for six. Fair <laughs> 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 So, to be fair, I would have chose the four rounds at Sky anyway, so 
Yeah, but the, like the last two fights, that the, the one in Newcastle and the one in Barcelona. I know. I'm they, just just about to get them out there in that fourth round. Yes. <laughs> yes. Elsa Helmet. I know I had a rocky start, right? Well, not a rocky start. <laughs> I had a great start. First two rounds, I was in cruise control. I think that was a problem. I was thinking. So doddle this. Landed hook spin on on the first round, nearly dropped that. I was thinking early night. <laughs> oh, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But um, like she she's dying off in the fourth and I, and I don't know if you could see it on the on the video, but when I caught her with a body shot, she really winced and like I felt like she was going. And if I had one more round, and I, and I felt like I was the same with Claudia, but you live and you learn. What did you learn round most? Round was good. What are you saying? Yeah, sorry? I, was, I was just going to say, what did you learn most about those particular fights? It, like you, you talked about the, the last two in particular, April. But is there is there is there been one thing that you've taken from those last two fights? And you obviously talked about your six rounders, and we'll see how you get on with that. But it's the one thing that you've taken that you're going to take into your future fights. Well, I think I learned a lot about myself as a person and everything in Barcelona because how that fight, I, I don't know if you actually know this, I, I went there by myself, just me and Savannah, me and Savannah and my old amateur coach who I hadn't seen or trained with for two and a half, three years. Um, it was it was like Liam Smith, obviously me coach at a it was the last minute I got a phone call, 11 days notice, I think it was. And um, Liam Smith was boxing Kervinov in Russia. Is that his name? Anyways, I think that's his name. Uh, it's a good so pronunciation, anyways, I'll go with it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so it sounds like it must be read. Um, <laughs> so he was over there in Russia, so the, with the quarantine, you had to do a day two and a day eight, and I was flying day six or day seven, so my coach couldn't come with us. Um, so he just said, you can go buy yourself you can take your old amateur coach or obviously you can't box so i i just went and <laughs> i just to be honest I, I can't believe how lightly i took it as if to be like ah it's fine sound it was a disowned build it was a big thing I mean face was on the board and i'm just sat there thinking i'm come here by myself savannah's thinking it will i kind of do cuts i kind of oh it was just it was it was like a girl's holiday it was mad it was honestly mad like it was crazy but it was a good experience, but uh, I, I definitely learned that uh, your, your opponent's dangerous at all times. Like the, You can't be rushing things. And I think in the third round, I could hear Eddie Hearn saying, shot, shot. And I was just getting excited, excited, excited. And I just come out the third, ended the second a bit daft, like, ah, I'm putting 10 punches, didn't need to do it. And then started the third, the same excited way, and just, just needed to stick with my job and get by my boxing. And I could have made that night very, very, very easy. But... Um, you live and you learn. <laughs> so, yeah, it doesn't matter how you get the W in the end, does it? But Oh, uh, well, I, I, won, I, I won, won three of the rounds, convincingly. I'd give her the, give her the third round just because of she, you know, she, she caught us by surprise. That's what I would say. I was thinking, sure, you're not going to be hitting me like this. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it, was just a, it was a learning curve. You know what? I'm, I'm glad it happened. I've learned a lot from it. And I think the Claudia Vi fight, I was a lot more composed. And, and relax but then again I've learned from that as well because it, it was like I didn't I could have went through the gears a lot more I could have stopped Claudia earlier if I wanted to I hurt her a few times but because of what happened in Barcelona I, I just I didn't d -d 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 go through the gears so it's like it, it's all learning isn't it? it's, it's, yeah. it's all learning Has Eddie told you a plan that he has for you because obviously in women's boxing there there isn't quite the depth there yet it's obviously getting there because it's such a fast growing sport it's brilliant but, like, after 10 fights, you could be fighting for a world title. Is, is there yeah, a plan in place for you? There's a plan in place off Tony and my coach. <laughs> like, Eddie's, Eddie's just a promoter, hasn't he? Like, if, mm. if, if it was up to Eddie, he, he, if it was a really tough fight tomorrow, he'd put us in it. Do you know what I mean? It's up to my coach and my, my, um, my promoter to my promoter and my coach and my, my manager to make sure that... that I get the right fights at the right time and my coach has a plan for us. He he does. He's got me my next opponent picked out. He's already put it forward. It's um whether that that gets accepted or not, but it's just a little step up each time. And obviously he knows I haven't had a big amateur experience, so he knows that I need to I need to get the experience in the pros. I'm just like I wanna he wants us to get a ten fights and then we'll we'll be we'll be on that on that path. Well, yeah, obviously I was just going to say, you're a very good fighter, Abel, but I've found out after that last fight, you're a very, very good singer. Obviously, <laughs> orchestrating, ah, orchestrating, yeah. the, orchestrating the crowds live on Sky Sports. You can see the picture there. Did, oh, was that, was that planned, Abel? No, not at all. So basically, right, we're in the bubble. 
in we're, we're in the Hilton Hotel in the bubble. I'm I'm just being myself, having a laugh with, with, with everyone and um it, it's the press conference and uh my coach Joe McNally goes, What are you gonna say? And I was like, just no, just nice, keep it simple. And he's like, No, in fact, I think we're <laughs> we were, we were, I think we'd snuck out of the David Lloyd and we're having a jacuzzi, right? And this is what he's telling us. And he's going, listen, you need to go out there, say, it's your town, this is my town, this is my people. What he told us to say was, like, exaggerated and I just picked little bits of it because I was thinking, I can't say all that. So anyways, <laughs> I do the press conference and I was thinking, oh, well, I listen to his advice, I say, say the stuff. Um, but it was quite tame. And then just before I'm about to go out, he's like, rubbing my shoulders and he's like this is your town your people rinse the crowd like like make the most of it so i was just planning on going on there just hitting me newcastle badge <laughs> put my hand up and then that song kicked in and god knows what happened there i started singing and all sorts <laughs> singing me all walking tune you know, it was just uh, it was the energy it was a thousand people in there but it felt like 20. it was yeah. probably the best experience i've ever had in my life it was brilliant i mean i, I didn't realize like how credit much credit to myself for the song choice, by the way. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. It's, it's got to be a different song each time now. You've set you've set the standard. It's got to keep getting bigger and bigger. I wouldn't mind getting like a, uh, like a, just a just a one that I that I love, but it's I like, might have to get the air and the day and the start. <laughs> Too wrong. But uh, it wasn't planned at all, but. I just could hear the crowd in the background on the interview after saying two, two, black and white army, two. So I started singing that and then I was just like, I don't know, I just felt like I was in the Gallagher and just started yeah. singing songs. <laughs> it was the oh, first one that come to my head. And it just come out and I think I went all right, to be honest. <laughs> oh, it, it went down really well. I think we had it on our socials as well, Sam. I think it just went. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It took me all of two seconds to clip that up and put it on our socials. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, but that's good. You talk about obviously Savannah and yourself, and uh, you mentioned like Joe Laws, who was written. The, the Northeast and boxing is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What do you think will happen in the next, say, five years in terms of Northeast boxing? I can only see it getting better. I like, I could potentially take over British boxing if it goes as good as planned. Um, you've got Mark Dickinson, who's down with Ben Davison, who's, who's from, from up north as well. What a talent he is. Like, uh, the pool, uh, there's, so, there's, there's some really great boxers coming through. Really, really good boxers. And hopefully, like if it goes to plan, the next 18 months for me is pivotal. And hopefully, I'll be knocking on the, the doors for, for world titles. And I genuinely believe that that this uh, going up there and being around Savannah and, and listening to Peter and adding that to me to part of me training, I think that, that'll just uh, um, speed, me, speed me growth on as well. Because she does little things like if I can just take even obviously you've always put your own spin on stuff. Everyone's got a different style, but if I can just like try and style myself on what she's like, but with my twist on it, and and it's just it's just all good. And you know, it's, it's when I put a lot of time and effort into me as well, so I've got to be appreciative for that. Like after the sessions, we like the sessions done, we're sat, we're talking about it, we're drilling little things, and it's it's good, mate. It's really good. I'm I'm, I'm lucky. I feel genuinely grateful and lucky to have that. Like. People would pay for what I, what I've, what I've, what I've, what the experience I get up there, so I'm happy. I mean, I remember when, as you say, it was just you and Savannah that went over to <laughs> Barcelona, mm-hmm. and I'm following her on Instagram. Like she was, she was putting clips up of you, your way and whatnot, and you just decked head to toe in Newcastle gear. <laughs> How how big of a part does the club still play on your your day to day life? Are you still scrolling the news now for transfer rumours and keeping up to date with games? And how often do you manage to get a, a, a how much, how often did you manage to get to games? Obviously before COVID with your training. Um, I'd, it was like it's hard, isn't it, when you're in camp? But I got mm. I got a couple. Me yeah, um, I've got I've, me me friend. My friend's got a box for next season, so I was messaging him. He was like, do you want to add on, like, money bags? I'm thinking, do you know how much women's boxing day is? I don't think so. It's like three and a half grand to be in this box. I was like, I'm in Liverpool. I was like, you can put us on as a guest. He was like, ah, oh, you can just come away, I guess. So even if I just get a couple in, um, I'll be happy. Uh, but it plays a massive part. Like, it, it, do you know, like, I, I love I love the football. I really do. I love Newcastle. I watch all the games and... I'm a bit, a bit upset about this court case situation, but it, I just, oh, it's just, it's just, 
I'll probably be a world champion before that comes through. <laughs> <laughs> there's the line. There's the line of the. There's the title of the video. That's, so. how, that's, how, that's how bad that is. Um, but mate, it just lifts the city, doesn't it? It really does. When 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 we're doing well as a football club, the, the city's just happy and there's no atmosphere like a football game. I think a Lewis Ritson fight comes close, but uh, it, it, it's good, isn't it? Like, mm. I, I love, I love, I love the football. What have you made of it recently, Abel? Because obviously. Finished 12th last year with no fans, but it was very touch and go whether Newcastle are going to stay up. And now well, we're, past, we can't decide if Joe Willock's going to come. These past two friendlies haven't been, haven't been wowing, have they? I'm glad Callum Wilson's got the number nine because Joe Wilton, Joe, 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 I've got COVID brain, mate. <laughs> he was big, but um, what a what a waste of money he was. What was it, forty million quid? Yep. Pathetic, isn't it? Pathetic. <laughs> but let's hope, let's hope he was finishing the season better, a lot better, best he's been. So hopefully he can get his confidence up and actually like be worth his money. And shame about hopefully. What, what do you think will happen, Willick? And Arsenal, like what a player he was. It'd be good if we could have. Could have kept him, but it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah, hopefully we can get him back. But like as you say, there now Callum Wilson's got the number nine. Do you think it will take the pressure off Joe Linton a bit? Well, hopefully, hopefully, um, he's great, isn't he, Callum Wilson? What would we've done without him? Oh, and I've yeah. seen that he's plan. How many goals does he plan to get next season? Twenty, 20 goals. 20. Yeah. God, even just hearing that makes you excited, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But let's just hope he's he's been prone to injury, hasn't he? So let's just hope he stays fit and Saint Maximam as well. Like what we've done well with him, he's just like a little injection of pace, isn't he? He just gets the ball and he just he's he's like he just he can just flip a game, can't he? And Almiron as well. Almiron as well. So it's just it just depends how next season goes. I feel like every season's different. We can have a good dynamic and then this season could be totally different. Let's hope it's better. But um I was happy we finished twelfth, to be fair. Yeah, right. never looked like that, did we? You kind of, you kind of, you kind of grumble with that, especially. It doesn't look like he's going to spend any money this year. They, they're on about loans, getting in loan things, and it's just ah, oh, oh god. Uh, I start <laughs> swearing. I start swearing, and sometimes you want to speak about it. <laughs> um, do you, Abel? What do you think about Steve Bruce? Uh, you know, like he, he, I suppose you can only do what he's doing. The players seem to like him. The players seem to like him, but he's no Rafa Benitez, is he? But um, seeing he's went Everton. Yeah, yeah, he's sure. I'm sure Tony's happy. I know. Well, it's funny though, isn't it? Because loads of Everton fans aren't happy because he was at Liverpool. So it's funny, yeah. but I, I don't know how Tony feels about it. I'll have to ask him. But he's like, he loves football as well. So like, to be fair, when I speak to him, I often just start speaking about the football. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, if the match has been on and stuff, so. I just, do you know when you're in camp as well, and the football's on, and you you can just sit in the house and put the match on, and it can just it breaks it up for you, doesn't it? Mm. Well, it does when we're playing half decent stuff, not when we're losing three oh, to Brian. Oh, it can literally ruin your day. It's one yeah. or the other. Which is I know, that normally happens. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, Abel, I'm have to, I'm gonna, I, I want to give you a little bit of praise, actually, um, for something that I know is very, very close to your heart. and. Um, it's about obviously <laughs> your, your, your cousin Paul and yeah. very very tragic tragic circumstances of what happened um, a couple of years ago now and you know you have a massive following on every social media platform and I think I don't know how many times people have stopped you and talked to you about what you've done in regards to getting a lot of defibrillators out and for yeah. people that don't know I don't know if you feel comfortable talking about it uh, Abel but could you if for people that maybe don't know what what actually happened um, with Paul and how has that day shaped you as a person, but also held with other people around, particularly the northeast? For me, to be honest, it's uh, it's, uh, it's obviously hard for us to speak about, but uh, I don't I don't mind because it, it does raise awareness and stuff. But um, to be honest, I've never been the same since it happened, mate. Me, my mental health suffered massively from it. Uh, I went on antidepressants and everything after that, and a lot of people don't don't know that. Um, it really hit us hard. Like I, I, I don't know if if you'd have known like but he was like my best friend, my brother, like everything we'd done, we'd done together. We went to Vegas and Pizza. <laughs> like he was literally like 
by my side the full time. And I've had a lot of other life adversity, which uh, I don't want to talk about that. On, on of course. I kept that on myself. But uh, in, when that happened, I just, uh, I just, man, I just couldn't believe. Like, I was just in, I didn't didn't kick in for a year. Like, 12 months, it took about a year for it to kick in. And then that's when the, my mental health really started to tear. And you're just, like, in shock. Horrible. But um, I've been, I'm really passionate about that and, and, and getting it out there. But basically what happened was he was in on Ibiza. He was he was, he was on Ibiza. He was in Ibiza. And um he, he come to me in the morning the 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 morning before he flew, he got all my t shirts because I, I like my clothes and you know? <laughs> so he, he took me took my Gucci t shirts off as well. <laughs> and um he was um he was over there and I, I said to him, I said, Oh, how am I man? Wait, because I had certain things going on which I, I don't want to go into, but I couldn't go with him. And I said, how are you, wait? I was like, you're shocking you. And he's like, nah, I'm going away for my birthday. You can come with us after. So I was, I'd actually asked him like to, to not go on this time and, and wait for me to go. And um, he went anyways, and he was over there with his, his, his stepbrother, Tom, and his, and, and my friend Blackett, well, friend Blackett, and he, there was a couple of older lads over there, and they went to Caligratio, where the rocks are. Uh, it's quite a popular spot. And to be honest, mate, I've been there myself, and I would uh, if that hadn't happened, I would I would jump in myself, and I, obviously now with respect for the city, I wouldn't I couldn't do that. But um, I went, I looked over, and uh, like you don't realise though when you look down, the swim back to shore. So you look over, I think, gosh, you may jump into the sea, great fun, not realising that it's choppy. The swim back, and there's like there's a lot of like there was a, the sun posted stuff that was wrong, saying like he crashed off the rocks and hit his head. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. That wasn't what happened at all. He um, he jumped in the water, got out. Apparently said that was amazing, and he wasn't the strongest swimmer. And if I was there, I wouldn't have let him jump in because I know he can't swim. I remember we were being seven year old in New York, and I'm swimming in the pool, and he's fuming, jealous because he can't swim. He jumped <laughs> on my head. Net, well, my mum had to jump in, get him off us. <laughs> he <died> drowned us. <laughs> Human that I'm swimming and he couldn't, and uh, and and I knew he couldn't swim, but um. Like I was just, it was just, it was one of them things. And the boys being boys, and he's, he's, he's jumped in, and he's, he's like literally been two meters from getting out. He's been in difficulty. The lads were telling him to go on his back. He was asking for help and stuff, and but everyone's swimming back. They're in difficulties themselves. Like I feel for the people out there. Like fucking hell, I was be sorry for me French there, but no, it's fine. Don't it's been, um, it must have been horrific to watch. But and he, he's been two meters before getting out, and uh. He's went under the water, and uh, I think it was Louis Slater. I don't know if you know, who he is. you know Louis Slater. Louis Slater's got him up the water, and they've performed. They, they haven't known what they're doing. So he's been bashing on his chest. He's broke his ribs. Uh, like obviously, just try to help him. Um, he only needed to be put on his side for his airways to clear. Because I think he vomited a bit as well. So it was a bit of asphyxiation. And when someone comes out of water, you probably put them in the recovery position to clear their airways. But yeah. they clear their airways, and they would just perform CPR and. He still had a heartbeat when the, the ambulance come, but uh, he just didn't didn't survive. And it's it's crazy because I watched this thing on Netflix about surviving death, and there was some woman that survived being under the water for thirty minutes and survived. Wow. So it's just like I suppose when your time comes, your time comes. But it was just it's a brutal brutal thing. And like my family's just like my family's in bits now. Me me my auntie's just lost. And if I didn't have boxing, mate, I don't know how I would be because. I suffer every day. Like sometimes I, if people don't know this, they think, oh, you're boxing, your life's flying. But there'll be sometimes I, I go to the gym, I've had no sleep because I'm just like traumatized about what's happening with flashbacks and, and stuff like that. But it's a, it's a, it's a horrible thing. But fucking hell. I can, do you know what I say? <laughs> I just, I just want to thank you for, for talking about that because I know it's extremely difficult. But just from uh, even just seeing on Facebook, Abel, the amount of support and the amount of people that have given you well wishes and the amount of people that actually have the knowledge now to know what to do. You, you've arguably yeah. saved so many lives. That so is many absolutely lives, incredible. Yeah. So, so many lives. I think um, just if the fibrillators on time off beach now, I think we were raised yeah. like 3,000 pounds of family. It was like the fibs all over. And I've, we've had like messages saying like, oh my God, thank you so much that was there. A little baby fell ill and we were just so happy that that was there. And, I'm currently doing a bit of work now. I've just um I've just signed like a, a deal with Mavericks Trust, which is a, a charity, and they're investing. Like I'm I'm gonna announce it properly, um in the next like couple coming months. But they're investing thirty seven and a half grand. I put uh fifty fifty defibrillators 
and down the country in boxing gyms. So I'm I'm doing I'm trying hard. I'm like I'm, I'm I've I've agreed to do these things with like women in the community, like who've been domestically abused, um, women who've just got out of prison. Like I'm doing all little bits to to give back, and that's what I want to do for the sport. I want to I want to do good, and 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 I think like good karma in it. Like my Paul was a fucking amazing person, so I'll try and be a good one and get to where he is. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. But Sam, you know, to somebody from an, from the outset. You know, yeah. what, April, what April's done, it's, it's you know, Paul was Paul would be so proud of April. To be honest, I kind of take credit for the PGC. If you're obviously as a family, we've all come together, but Paul's mum and he's, he's uh, his stepdad, Billy, uh, he's the one that found the man to make the app. So there's not you can have any phone now, so if anybody doesn't yeah. get anything, really, literally, toddler, baby, adult, when they drown, you're having a heart attack. If you don't know what you're doing, you go on the app and it'll give you like a step to step guide on what to do. So downloaded everyone it's called pgcpr some all app stores you just need to download it have a little of look at it just keep it on your phone because imagine if like you just don't know somebody could drop down in front of you in the supermarket and if you like it, it genuinely does save lives yeah of course yeah. it does i mean you look at christian erickson as well what happened to him in in, in the euros yeah. um things like that just highlight normal people going wow I, don't, I wouldn't know what to do so you april doing what you're doing which is amazing work yeah it is it, it's it's a legacy that that that's going to carry on forever and help so many people it's ridiculous and like you've got your your, your boxing your in-ring gear is is kind of it's either paul or newcastle united so. <laughs> <laughs> so, that comes a reminder there isn't there and the um he, he'll be ridiculously proud looking down at you winning a world title yeah, one day absolutely mate, that, that's the plan and it's it's funny you know when you lose someone you like you look at life it's just so different you like i'm not like i don't have any fear of anybody do you know what i mean after you've been through that mate you don't realize man it's fucked it's, it's the worst thing i've had just 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 take every day as it comes in it but i really like I, that is the, the aim like world title i can put that on his wall in his bedroom and i'll be and I'll be happy. That's my goal, and just try and help people along the way. Oh, I think that's the I think that's the perfect uh, the perfect career path. I have to say. But just finally, April, just before we finish, um, mm. what do you think? What do you want to achieve from boxing? I know obviously the world title is is a massive, massive thing. But what would you be happy with from your boxing career? A world title, mate. I'd be happy unless I get that. Uh, I'm, t- you know, I'm 26, I'm young, I'm just a baby, I've got, I've got loads of years, I didn't start, I was 21, so you know, like, you've got these amateurs that are turning over, and they've been boxing since they're 12, they're not going to change much, where it's different for me, like, I am going to change so much in these next eight months, my next fight I'm going to be different, the one after that I'm going to be different, and I'm just going to keep getting better and better and better, so my life experience is of a blessing, so basically, I've just got to where I've got to because I can have a scrap. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 you can in, t- you can you can teach boxing, but you kind of teach balls and heart, and I, and I genuinely believe I've got an abundance of that. So when these long rounds come in, you've got to dig deep, and I, I, I feel like I'll be able to. And um, like you say, like I've like I've said before about the my coach I've got down here, he was a great boxer, Joseph McAlley. He was tipped to be one of the best to come out of the rotunda, and you've, you've got Callum Smith, Tony Bellew, all of them have come out of there, and he, he's 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 a southpaw, so he I, he can teach us little things on that side of the thing, and uh, and then I'd be a fury in sports, I just I genuinely if that can't get us there, no it can. <laughs> so <laughs> seriously, you know, so I just it's just about timing though as well, isn't it? The right fights, the right time, not being rushed, um. Because I'd fight anyone, but I'm not there for a team that have. I'm like, I want that fight, I want that fight. And the coach is like, no, no, you, you get that fight when I say you're ready. I'm not going to say which fight, but uh, um, it's a fight that, 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 that's been offered that to turn back that I wanted, and it's just, it just didn't really make sense, as they said. But um, uh, it's, it's that, that, that's what I mean about timing. And, and like you like said, Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn would have put us in that fight straight away. But it's like so Tony and the coach that'll be like, yeah, what's the point in boxing now and struggling a bit, potentially losing could win, but if you win, it's like, oh well, it's it's early days for them, but you can build it up, both make great money, uh, and 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 in twelve months you'll be a lot lot better athlete for it. So 
but it's, it's all about timing and the right team in it. Of course it is. Um, Sam, where can everybody get this podcast? Uh, available on all podcast outlets and then uh, on YouTube as well because you're watching it now, so well done. You found it. So, yeah, new <laughs> podcast out every Tuesday. And now proper crowds are back. We can actually get to one of your fights, April. So, uh, yeah, man. Get the support in. You can start the chance next time. <laughs> exactly. Uh, one April Hunter, there you go. I will go with that. Well, it's been, abs- it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Talking All Things Boxing Newcastle and the great work that you've done along with Thank Paul's you, family and we're getting the defibrillators across the uh, across the UK as well. So we'll put the link in the description for the app um, so that everybody can download it as well. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. No, it's not Thank a problem you. at all. So for myself, yeah. Sam, Sam Milner and the future world champion of boxing, Thank April Hunter, we'll see you all very okay. soon.